There's something about the solemn assembly of the people of God. There's a, there is a greatness in that. There's something that, and it's always been that way. God has always uh, manifest himself in, uh, in, 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 in the, uh, and call his people together. When God uh, brought Israel out of Egypt, then he had Moses to um, establish the tabernacle. Remember in the tabernacle in the wilderness? And, the, and he would call the people together and they would meet. You know, it's interesting. And God would meet them in the tabernacle. And I remember once he was, you know, it was a little situation going on with Miriam and Aaron. You know, they got a little sassy. And, and you know, God, God got a little, you know, God was disturbed about that. Yes, he was. But, you know, he wouldn't talk. He told them to come down to the tabernacle. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Don't, no, no. Well, can't you tell me? Something about that. Yeah, yeah. So, but we don't have any problem with that. We just gather in the presence of God down at this place of, of, of assembly. And, uh, and that's where God will speak to us. There is, there is an... Um, anointing that you'll experience in the assembly of the people of God that you're not going to, you, you necessarily, you won't get it anywhere else. Amen. Yeah, there, there's something about gathering. See, this place has been dedicated for the sake of the gospel. It's been dedicated to God. That's, that's not just something to do. That wasn't just something to do. That wasn't, we didn't just figure one day, oh, we have nothing else to do today. Let's just go dedicate this building to God. No, it wasn't like that. No, it was purposeful. It's, that was purposefully done. So, so obviously, if, if we dedicate a place for the assembly of the people of God, well, don't you think God responded to our dedication Yes. Well, then, did it just go away and nothing happened? No. There's a reason for that, and then, and we utilize that, and that's why we gather here. Amen. You know, we we don't gather down at the beach. You know, down to park. Nothing wrong with gathering at the park, but that's that's a different. But but here is something different. There's something, and I say that because I think I don't think people realize the value. G- Christians, good Christians, if you may say so. I don't know if they realize the value in coming together in the assembly. Amen. Amen. There's a great value in that. And, uh, and when you do that, you know what I mean, when you honestly and sincerely and, and humbly do that, you're going to get results. I know I do. Yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of, this place kind of grew on me. It just, I'm just stuck here. I like it. You know what I mean? It works for me. Keeps me going. Amen. You know what I mean? So I just I thought I'd say that, you know what I mean? Just kind of encourage us. You know what I mean? That, that coming together, you know, you might be sitting around. I know, what, I know how the flesh is. Flesh is really no good. You know, you sit around and you think, well, should I go or should I not? <laughs> I probably didn't get a problem with them went through that one. Well, of course, the flesh always said, nah, it don't matter. You can read your Bible. Yeah. You can pray at home. You can read your Bible at home. You can, you can listen to this. You can listen to the message on the, t- on the TV, on the computer. Say, hey, that not worry about it. I'm a little bushed anyway. The flesh is always that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, there is something here. There's something that you're going to get here that you're not going to get. Don't let your flesh talk you out of what God has for you. Because your flesh, see, your flesh is really not much good. And it's not going anywhere either. I can assure you of that. From the dirt it came and from the dirt it's going back to. Yes. I can assure you of that. It is not going anywhere. So don't let your flesh talk you out of the blessings that God has for you. We've been talking about life. Life, life is a promise. It's a promise from God. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the, the word of God, our, our, we get our instructions from God. Life, this wonderful life that we have received through Jesus Christ. You know, we, you know it's, I know it's real because God said, the word said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe on him should have this life. Think about that. He gave his God, the creator of heaven and earth, so loved us that he gave his only begotten son so that we could have this life. So it has to be valuable. 
It has to be. It has. To. I don't care how the devil may fan you and say, well, it has to be valuable. Now, the value that you place on this life is going to determine the effectiveness of it and how you walk in it. If you don't place a high value on it, then it won't mean anything to you. You know, just kind of, well, your life, life so, so, so. Well, that's all that the devil will always try to do that to you. The devil will always try to downgrade the things of God. Well, you got to be smart enough to know, dear God, that, that, he's, that he's, God already told us he's a thief. But don't let the devil down. Don't let him devalue you. Don't let him devalue what God has provided for you. This life that God has given unto us, it's a life that God promised us. You say, well, well what is this life? Well, I've given you my definition of this, and you can, you can study it out and read it out, and it's, it's right. Mm -hmm. Life is everything that's good. I don't know anybody that wants bad. Even food wants bad, wants good. But, but life is everything that's good. Life is from God, and life is all inclusive. Yes. You ever do one of those all inclusive trip vacations? You get everything because you pay for it up front. But once you drop that knot up front, they'll give you everything. All inclusive. Eat all you want. You know, all inclusive. Well, life is all inclusive, but, you, but it's free, it's a gift. It's a gift from God to now, 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 you can listen to the word so long that it, you lose this punch. If you, 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 you the out of ears. You say, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> you got anything new? You haven't done anything with the old. Amen. No, 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 no thing. You know, put value on the word of God. And when you, when you place value on the word of God, then, then it, will, it, will, it, will, it will be valuable to you, and then you'll, you, you'll, it, will, it will be valuable, and you will experience the value of it. But if you place no value on the things of God, then you will experience no value. You won't experience anything. But if you place high value, see, I, have, I highly value my faith. I value my faith. And it works for me. Man, I get what I want. I do. I get everything. I get whatever I want. My faith provides it for me. It produces it for me. Because I put high value. I believe in the word of God. I believe in the word of God. I believe the Bible. I believe I can have what it says I can have. Well, here, here, well see, all of the things of God is the same way. When you place a value, see, when God, we talk about life, the promise of life, the life, it's, 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 you got to, you got to hear it. And, and, and you ever notice how different Christians are up and they're all over the, you know, different Christians are different. Well, well, you know, Christianity is wonderful. Well, you would think that all, they would all be, be the same because God is the same. Why us Christians some short, some tall, and I'm not talking about actually height. Some, uh, some, some doing well, some not doing so well, some living on top, some at the bottom. They're all over the place. Why is that? It is all determined by the value that they place on the things of God. Amen. Amen. I place, you, put, you place high value on God's commodities, they're gonna, it's going to, it'll be. And, and here's what's good about that. You can't overprice the things of God. In other words, there is no limit to the value that you can place on the things of God. There's no limit to it. The higher you value it, it'll just go up. I mean, I mean, the price just keeps going up. It just keeps going up. You get up tomorrow, and if you consider it to be of a, of a greater value than yesterday, it'll go up again. The following day, it'll go up. It's up to you. See, God said it this way. <clears throat> Whatever you allow, heaven will allow that. If you put high value on the things of God, heaven will place high value upon them. If it doesn't mean anything to you, it won't mean anything to you. Heaven will treat, treat you. That's the treatment you'll get from heaven. You see. What did Jesus tell? According to what? 
Your faith. According to your faith. According to your faith. Be it unto you. Yes, sir. Remember the girl that had the, ish, the blood problem? Yes. Made up her mind. She wasn't going to put up with that anymore. No, no. That girl lost, spent a lot of money, boy. No. Spent all she had. Oh, the doctors, doctors didn't drain her. Going about their business. That's right. But she wasn't satisfied. She just, she, just, she didn't give up. No. She didn't throw in the tie, so to speak. She finally heard about Jesus. Yeah. She heard about and went after him. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was tight, and you know what I mean? She wasn't supposed to be out there, but she went after him anyway. And she got what she wanted. Why? Wow. She elevated the value mm -hmm. of that interaction with Jesus Christ. It was worth getting caught out there. Yeah. It was worth it. You take the old boy that was paralyzed. Right. He could even walk. But he heard about Jesus. Mm -hmm. That didn't stop him from going to the meeting. Isn't it amazing how you take a guy that can't even walk? Mm. And then you got people that's, that's got two, three cars. Good. Ain't enough value for them to go nowhere. Uh -huh. Listen to the word, well, I don't. <laughs> so they place no value on it. So he gets nothing. Here's a man that can't even walk. He can't go. He physically can't go. Mm. But he goes. Because he makes up in his mind he can go. Well, he, well there, somebody got legs. I may not have any. I may not have to walk, but somebody can walk. How about give me a, how about give me a lift? Yeah. On your back. Mm -hmm. The Bible said it was four of them that took that old boy. And then got to church and couldn't get in. Big crowd, you know. Well, let's go on back to the house. No, 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 no. We're going to figure out a way to get in there. Well, you know how pushy people are. You've been to, you've been to crowded places. You know, you try to push in somebody, they knock you down. <laughs> but he doesn't, this guy, you understand, I'm trying to show you the value, when you place value on something, yes, sir. how it will work for you. See, when you make a decision to go after the life that God has provided for you, there is nothing that can stop you. I mean, come on, if, 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 that's why God gives us these extreme illustrations in Scripture for our admonition. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's extreme. Yes, it is. He didn't say the old boy had a bad toe. This guy is paralyzed. You know he can't go nowhere. But he does. Mm. He gets there, and you would think, dear, dear God, if once he hits a ride to church, you would think, dear God, somehow I'd stand back and let him get in there. You would think so, but he didn't. Well, you got another obstacle here. Well, they won't, they won't let us. We, we can't get in. It's just a crowd. It's just a crowd. And you know how pushy, pushy, pushy people are. You've been in crowds. I've been in them. And he couldn't get in there. And somebody come up with the idea. Ah. And they went up on the roof. Took out the tiling. Yes. Let him down. Let him down. Yes. Dear, that's chancy, dear Lord. <laughs> that's chancy. Mm. I mean, it's not like they had a solid scaffolding built. <laughs> this is all makeshift now. Oh. Ropes or whatever they, had, whatever they had makeshift, and they could, that thing could slip in a minute. Yeah. And you, you take, <laughs> he's in bad shape. <laughs> now, I'm trying to show you the persistence. Mm. And the value in being persistent and placing high value on the things of God. Yes, is, the, is, the things of, is it worth you to get up in the morning, you know, when you feel like sleeping and go pray? Is there enough value on your relationship to do that? You follow what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. oh you know, you just rather, sit there, Lord, rather, rather just lay there and soak that flesh. Is it worth you to get up and so say, let me go out here to this Bible meeting tonight? Do you have that much, do you have to place that much of a value on the things of God? That maybe that's God has a word for me. Yes. Or does, it doesn't have enough value. It doesn't, doesn't value enough. Mm. Ah. You understand? But this is reality. This is where people really are. 
This is where we are. And so no, women, no wonder we're all over the place in reference to our faith. You know what I mean? Some got it, some don't. Some, I don't know, whatever. You, you understand? Why? There's no value on it. But, but, but I, want to, I, want, I want to encourage you to elevate the value of, of what God has provided for you. This life, life is a promise. It's a promise that God has, and it's, I, I know it's great, it's, a, it's, it's, it's priceless. What this gift here is priceless because God offered his only begotten son to provide it for us. Now, now you say, well, well, dear God, but you know the problem? You know why we, don't, why we don't value the things of God? Don't believe them. Oh, we'll just blab something out and say, yeah, we believe, but you don't really believe. I'll tell you exactly what you believe. You believe whatever you're doing. Whatever you are doing, that's what you believe. You know, but, 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 but. You have to believe, and that's what God desired. God spoke to Moses way back in the book of Numbers, and he says, how long will this people not believe me? See, that's the thing. That's what God will. See, God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. But in his pleasure is not to sell us anything. His good pleasure is to give us the kingdom. He said that. His pleasure is in giving us this life. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Not sell it to you. Not issue it out to you, little piece by piece, give you a little piece here, a little piece there. It's his good pleasure to give you, to give you, to give you the kingdom. To give you the kingdom. You know, I, I want to, I really want to, I really want to stir us. We need to be, we need a good stirring. I want to stir us to go after God like you never before. Because if, if you just, if you just plug along, you're going to get plug along results. But if you get, if you radically go after the things of God. You're going to get radical results. And, and I want to encourage us to do that. Because I'm telling you, this it's a time now. We need it. And those that are walking just loosely need to be moved by somebody running at high speed. Yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. See, running at high speed and locking into the things of God and radically going after God attracts attention. From those that's just coasting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you can either do one or two things. You can motivate them to come on with you or they'll get off the track. Mm. Well, that's what Jesus kind of said the same thing. In using different language. He used the language of being lukewarm. Uh -huh. Remember that one? Uh -huh. He said, I wish you was one or the other. Yes. Yes. Yes, he said, but because you're just joking along, you know, hitting and missing, you know, he said, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. That's called being lukewarm. Mm -hmm. I don't like lukewarm coffee. I want my coffee hot. Yeah, yeah I know you do. Yeah, yeah, that's good, yeah. No, who likes lukewarm coffee? You either, either want hot coffee or iced coffee. Yeah. Now, I don't do iced coffee. I don't do iced coffee. <laughs> but, I, but, you, but, you know, they don't, they don't even sell lukewarm coffee. No. They sell iced coffee, yeah. hot coffee, mm. but I never seen a sign say lukewarm coffee. Have you seen that? <laughs> I never seen that. Yeah. Nobody wants that. Jesus didn't want it. No, he, didn't. he said, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to do what? Spew, Spew you out of my mouth. Spew. I would that you were hot or cold. Mm. Now, that's real. But, but it isn't it interesting how we can just read and just ignore and just plug along. Wow. I would rather stir me than to be pushed into a position that somebody else got to stir me. And I got news for you. We're coming to a point in time one of the two is going to happen. Either you're going to stir yourself 
and, and lock in, or you're going to be put in a position to be pushed into it. Amen. And when you're pushed into it, you will go one, either way or the other. Mm -hmm. Either way or the other. Either way or the other. And that's dangerous. You don't want that. Amen. You see? So I, I want to encourage us. I, I, I want to encourage us to, 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 to just press in and press in and go after, go after, go after, go after, go after the things of God. Yeah. Find out, know where God has called you in this life. Realize that and, and press in and take hold, take hold, take hold to this life. Take hold to this life. Paul, in 1 Timothy chapter number 6, that he, he really says that. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12, he says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold to it. You see that? Now, 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 that's not somebody that's just whistling along. He didn't say just whistle along and, you, and you're going to lay hold to it. No. He said, fight. Yes. You know what that mean? You see, it, is, it always comes around to what you believe. Amen. It, always, it always comes back to what you believe. If you don't believe the promises of God, they're not going to be manifest into your life. If you don't believe the instructions of God and follow them, you're not going to get the results of what the promise is. Amen. You're not going to get it. But you have to believe. Now, he said, fight the good fight of faith. Well, do you believe that you, do you believe that it'll happen? If you don't believe it, then you will not, you will not fight. Mm -hmm. You know what fighting is? Fighting is fighting. And it's, 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 it's turbulence. It's not comfort. There's no comfort in fighting. I never got comfortable. I never was comfortable in fighting. It's always messy. Fighting is real messy. You, you don't know how it's going to come out sometimes. You know, the guy's always in your way and all that. Can't hit him like you want to. But, 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 but this fight that we're talking about here is a fight that we go after, we charge, we know what the Word of God says, and we f we're not talking about a fist fight here. We're talking about a faith fight. Uh -huh. A faith fight is making a decision. This is what God is saying. Mm. I'll believe it or die. Oh, yeah. I'll believe it or die. I'll believe yes. what God has said or I'll die. I I'll, I'll believe it. I choose I believe it. I, God said it. Fighting. 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 I, I had an experience. I had a real uh, interesting experience once. And, and I had fallen. I, I, I must have cracked a rib. But you know what I'm talking about a pain. And I had just gotten hold to the word of faith. You know what I mean? I'm, 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 God said, you know, this, this word is either going to, it's going to work or God's going to have to do something about it. Mm -hmm. You got to work and take it off the bomb, off the market. Yes, I, and I, I felt about like that. See, 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 let me tell you something. God will not get upset with you when you, when you put his word up, 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 up oh, uh, into the test. He, he won't, I found that out. I found that out at an early age. <laughs> you, you would think that God would get upset with you when you start challenging his word. He won't. He likes that. God will not get upset if you put his word on to the test. Yes, he, he, won't, he won't get upset. And it, but you've got to get to a point where either it's going to work or you're going to have to take it off the market. And I, and I, I did that. I did that. Yes. You know, sometimes I, I think sometimes, and I, 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 I really think that we learn too much sometimes, and I think we, get too, we grow too much and we, after a while we don't, we don't believe like we used to believe. You know, I, I, we get sophisticated faith. I don't know what that is, but it don't work. Sophisticated faith don't work. If sophisticated faith is when you, yeah, well, you know what I mean, we don't want to look, we don't want to get all radical. You come on, ah, we had to just take the low road. I didn't start off that way. I, I, I didn't care. 
I, I didn't care. I didn't care. And I, I shared this event for, to encourage you. But, but, this, but, but, I, but I had this experience, and I was, I was in the construction field, and I was working. Guess what I was working at? I was working on the hospital. I was working at Riverview Hospital in Red Bank. We were putting an audition on that hospital. And I had fallen, and I hurt myself. I mean, I hurt myself. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I must, I must, the rib must have been cracked. I don't know, but it hurt. It was hurting. It was hurting. Now, all I need to do is walk around the corner to the emergency room. I know. I'm healed by the word of God. Went on back to work. I ain't going, I'm not, I don't, not, that ain't even up for discussion. I don't want no emergency room. God's word says I'm healed, and bless God, I'm healed. Yeah. And, and, I, and I wouldn't go, I don't want to go back to work. We're not working, work to, work to quitting time. Yes, sir. We're to quitting time, got off work, got in my pickup truck and headed down the parkway. And that devil said, you'll never make it home. Man, you talk about hurting. I mean, I, I was hurting. I mean, that thing, I mean, dear God. And I got about half mad. I did. I really did. And I, I got to hollering at the devil, and I think I got to hollering at God. I, was, I really was. I mean, by that time, I'm about insane, you know what I mean? I don't care. And I'm saying, God, you told me what your word said. You said that I'm by, by your stripes, I'm healed, and I'm out here. You got to do something. I'm healed. I'm not going to do this anymore. I mean, I'm yelling and screaming. I'm dri driving and yelling and screaming and hurting. And, 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 I, and, and, and I never had an experience like this before, and I said, but it sounded like I heard God laugh. <laughs> I, honest to goodness, it sounded like I heard God laugh. And the pain began to subside. And it was the end of it. It was the end of it. Because I, I'm to the point where, you know, you, you don't want to put this word here. You don't want to tell me I'm healed. And you look at me, you know it ain't right. It ain't working. It ain't working. It's just somebody got to do something. Somebody better do somebody do something. Because yeah, I'm not, you know, this is, you know, some, this, somebody got to do something. Because this, this is no good. This is, this, this is no good. And I done put, I done put myself on the, my life on the line. Yeah. Done put my life on the line oh, but your word. And now you mean to tell me it's not going to work? And, and it was amazing. I mean, it was amazing. And all of that turbulence. And it was like I, I heard God laugh. Mm. And from that point, it, was, it began to subside. And that was it. That was, it. That was, that was the end of it. I, I say that. To say the value that you place on this life and on the word is going to determine the results that you get. Yes, God said, fight the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. Bless God. That's fighting. I was fighting. Yeah. I mean, I was fighting like I never fought. But I never fought like that before. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you talk about, you know, fighting in the spirit. Fighting in the spirit is not fighting in the, in the alley. <laughs> you mean, in the alley, you can just get a stick or something. You know what I mean? A knife or anything. To get them all, get you up, point it off you. But, but you in the, in, the, in the spirit, there ain't no, ain't no knife. Amen. It's, just, it's just what's going on between you and the word. Mm. It's the word. It's the word. It's the word. It's the word. And, and I think we need to push ourselves into those kind of fights to develop our faith. Amen. Yeah, just, you know, just casual faith ain't going to do very much for you. I'm going to tell you that right now. You know, carry your faith, you know, if you can't, you know, yeah, yeah, maybe if it don't work, you know, I just go do this. I, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that, you know, well, that's casual faith. And yeah. You get casual results. But if you get on a real jam, you can have a jam, you can have a problem. Yeah. There are a lot of people in jams today because they've been living on casual faith. And what, what, a lot of what people are going through today, casual faith won't get you through it. Come on, come on. I know, I see it happening. I yeah. see it happening. Casual Faith yeah. is not going to get you through what's going on right now, and it's not going to get any better. It's going to take radical faith yeah. Yeah. to navigate you through what you are going, what this generation is now, what the church, present day church generation is up against. All 
of the mess going on in the world with all of the sin. They got, this, they got sin stacked up like dirty clothes. I mean, immorality going to seeds. Babies by the millions that's been murdered daily. Left-wingers want to act like God doesn't exist. And out of all of this mess, chaos, the Christians has got to preach the gospel. Now, if you think you're going to do that with casual faith, I got news for you. You're going to only run your race with radical faith. The same faith that Peter, John, Paul, Jesus, the same faith that they use is going to be the same faith that you're going to have to use. The faith hasn't cheapened. The value of faith is the same. Jesus paid the same price for Paul's faith that he paid for yours. So it has to do the same thing. It's the same value of faith. You understand what we're talking about, see? Because, see, 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 see we live in a casual, easy-going culture. We don't, want to, we, don't, we don't even want to wait for our toast to heat up. We don't have time for that. Only, hurry up! We, we just live in a, you know, everything is just so, you know, there's no, there's no, there's no nothing. Everything got to be, ta, ta. No, 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 no. Let me, let me tell you something about this, about, about, this, about this life that God's given unto us. There will be times when you are going to do everything that God has said to do. You're going to speak every word that God has said for you to speak, and it's going to look like it's doing, doing absolutely nothing. And you're going to have to stand right where you are. What do you think it means when God said, when you have done all to stand? What, what do you think that means? There's one word he says that. When you have done all to stand, what's the next word? Stand. See what I mean? When you have done all, when you have done everything you know. And the pain is just as fierce as it was when you started. I've been there. What are you going to do? When you've done everything you know to do and you're just as sick as you was when you started, what are you going to do? When you've done everything you know to do and you just as broke and the situation looked just as dark as it did when you first started to pray, what are you going to do? You see, what you see is not the determining factor of the outcome. It's whether or not you stand. Because, see, if you believe, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Herod told Peter, I'm, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. As soon as this, soon as this holiday is over, I'm killing you. And he knew he wasn't joking because it doesn't kill, kill James. So he knows he wasn't teasing. What does Peter do? You see what I mean? Well, they say they're going to keep us so staying awake. It ain't going to help none. <laughs> you, you understand? Well, I'm going to stay awake for you. Already, I'm not going to stay awake. I'm not going to change his mind. Amen. And the Bible says he went to sleep. Yes, he and God had to come to wake him up mm. to get him out of there. Yes. Had to wake him up. Come on. Man, that's, that's the kind of faith I want. The devil's I'm, I'm going to kill you. And he goes to sleep. And God got to wake you up to deliver you. The angel coming in, woke him up, smote him. Get up, get your shoes on. Man, let's bail out of here. Broke the law. Broke him out of jail. Man, that's breaking the law in anybody's town. Well, God said you got to do what the law said. <laughs> Dear Lord Jesus. He broke out of jail. Man, they put anybody breaking out of jail. There's no lie. That's a crime. That's a crime everywhere. That's a crime everywhere, anywhere, anywhere you go. Breaking out of jail? And that ain't the first time he broke out. That ain't the only time, I should I say, that's the only time he broke out of jail. And God was in on it. Why didn't he obey him? 
See what I mean? See how we do? We take, word out, take the word of God out of context and don't know what you're talking about. You better get with God and learn to let God talk to you. God will teach you things. You understand what we're saying? See, we're talking about the life. This is the life. This is the understanding that comes with the life that God has provided for us. This is, see, the life that God has provided for us comes understanding. And God in his word say, in all you're getting, get what? Understand. Ah, I think it's worth us to stop and listen to that statement. No, no, don't just, no, you just can't read something. You got to get an understanding. Get an understanding of what God is doing in your life. Jesus had understanding. Oh, he was accused of breaking every rule that they had almost. Didn't bother him. Why? Wow, he had understanding. He had understanding. You and I need understanding. When, as we embrace this wonderful life that God has provided for us, we have understanding. Now, the good, the hope that we have is that this life is a promise from God. It's a promise from God. Listen to Titus chapter number one. Titus chapter number one. Paul, a bond servant of God, and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God, according to the faith of God, according to the faith of God, hallelujah, of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth which accords with godliness, verse 2, in hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised. Now, why would he say something like that? Because he is encouraging us to we, that we can trust it. He is, he is encouraging us that you can, you can let everything go and my word will always catch you. You don't have to leave anything out there just in case the word don't work. Amen. Amen. So you got to come to a point, you got to come to that. You got to come to a point where you will jump without the net. You know what the net's there for, just in case it don't work. When God said, trust me, you don't need the net. Amen. You don't need the net. You ever watch those, those uh, trapeze flyers? They got a net there, you know, just in case they miss. God's not going to miss. God said, jump, I'll catch you. You don't, you don't, you don't need a net. I'm guaranteed. See, that's the kind of faith we're talking about. We're talking about, that's the, kind, that's the level of faith we're talking about. We're talking about the level of faith to jump without the net. You know, and you, then you'll, get, you'll, be like, like, you'll be like Shadrach. Shadrach and Meshach said, I know he'll catch me. But if he don't catch me, I'm still going to jump. Hallelujah. Oh, dear God, that's the kind of faith I want. You see what I'm talking about? That's the kind of faith that got those boys delivered. That's the kind of faith you and I want, should be wanting. I'm, yeah, dear God, yeah, I, I, listen, I'm jumping. Amen. And God will catch me. But if he doesn't catch me, I'm still going to jump. And he did. God caught him. Do you understand? Now, do, do you think that we're going to get by with any less faith? I, I'll tell you, I, I want to stir you up. You're not going to get by with any less faith. And see, a faith of that magnitude is going to cause you to be at peace. That's the faith that's going to allow you to let peace rule. God said, let peace rule. You can only let peace rule with the kind of faith that you need to navigate through your generation. Faith is not cheap. The love of God is of high value. The life of God is the God kind of life. And it's the life that God promised. He promised it to us. Now, notice the language that he uses there in Titus. In hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised. Notice, notice the language he uses. He can't lie. And he promised it to me. Mm -hmm. 
God cannot lie, and he promised it to me. God cannot lie, and he promised me deliverance. He can't lie, and he promised it to me. He can't lie, and he promised me safety. He can't lie, and he promised me protection. He can't lie. Now it's in your, now it's in your court. You ever, you, ever, you, ever, you ever play tennis? I watched someone play tennis. I used to play a little tennis years ago. But you know, once I get the ball across the net, I didn't, I didn't worry, it didn't bother me until he got back over to my side. In fact, when I put it to the other side, I tried to make sure you didn't send it back. But, it bothered, but your, side didn't, your side of the court did not bother me, never bothered me. I was only concerned about it on my side. You, you understand? You see, see, the, the, see, see my, the word of God, see, faith, the word of God. I want the word, what the God's promise. When the promise is made, my responsibility is to believe what he says. He cannot lie. He promised it and he can't lie. He promised it and he can't lie. Why would he use such language for my encourage, to encourage me? He promised me a life. Look at it, look at it, look at that. In hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised. Why is that so strong? Because he wants me to latch on to it bulldog style and not let go. God said it. And that's what I was telling him. You said it. And ain't no way I cannot be healed. And I ain't going to do this no more. I'm, I'm to, I was in which end. I ain't doing this no more. I'm not, not doing this. No <laughs> no. You got to do it. Yes, sir. And he did. He could not, God could not send me away empty. That's right. That's right. He could not send me away empty. If he had sent me away empty, he would no longer be God. You got to understand that. When you go before him, when it, see, see, that's why he makes radical statements like that about himself. God, who cannot lie, made a promise. Uh -huh. yeah. that, that's, that's for you and I. He, he did that because of his love for you and I. God, who cannot lie, promised me this life. Now the ball is in your court. It's good, that, that's God just volunteered. He just volleyed the ball over. And it's in my court now. He can't lie, and he promised it to me. Now, what are you going to do with that? Do you see what we're talking about? And now, see, you and I, if you don't have a relationship with him, where you can start believing that, that it's not going to work. If you don't know him, you won't trust him because you won't even believe him. You, you, you think he's lying. Mm -hmm. You think, dear God, well, that's, you know, well, you can't take that literally. Yeah. You ever hear that stupid trite? Or oh, you just take the word literally. Yes. Free. Well, he didn't really mean that. Mm. Get on with around people like that. Yeah. They're not going anywhere. They're trying to keep you where they are. Mm -hmm. But, but, but a stuff, that, is a, that is a strong statement. That is a strong statement coming from God. In hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie. He can't lie. It's impossible for him to lie. It's impossible. That is an impossibility. It's impossible for God to tell a lie. And he promised me. He promised me. He promised me. Yes, sir. And the promise is without question. When God make a promise, when he make a promise, not only he can't lie, but the promise has to be fulfilled. Yeah. See, I can promise you something and then get to a point and I can't, and I can't, I can't you know, I, can't, I, I, I didn't renege on the promise, but I can't keep the end of the bargain. Dear God, I run out of cash. 
Well, God, well, God can't do that. Because watch this. If he runs out of cash and can't fulfill the promise, he ain't God no more. Now, he put himself in that, in that bind. Now, turn over to Hebrews. I'm going to show this to you. Because, see, I, what am I doing? I'm trying to build your faith up in the word of God. And when you get a confidence in God, when you develop confidence in God, you're on your own now. You don't need me. You can believe you. You just get it in. Ah, yeah. 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 I heard it. Follow me? Hebrews chapter number six. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. That's Hebrew, Hebrews 6.13. For when God made promises. Now, you remember when Israel was that down, when Jacob was down to Egypt, and then he, they grew into a nation down there. And you remember about, you know, 400 years later, they got to hollering down there, you know, about the depression that they was on, and they start hollering. And God heard them. Well, you don't think they're the only people in the world hollering, do you? Why did God hear them? Because he had made a promise to Abraham 400 years prior that he would deliver them and bless them and they would be his special people. He had promised them that. And he heard their cry because of the promise that he made to them. You see, God, it's not, the, it's, we don't see the practice of God honoring whims. You know, just, just, just a whim. When, 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 you, when prayers are answered, prayers is, is a result of a contract. Uh -huh. That's right. We know it better as a contract than covenant. We are Western-minded. We don't know anything about covenant. Mm -hmm. Amen. We know about contracts. We don't have a whole lot of confidence in them. We got so loose with those, even, you know. But, but, it's, but it's not, the, the answering of prayers is not just because you're in a jam. You know, God, you know, it's not because you're just pitiful. No, that's not, that, that's not, that's not what gets your prayers answered. Covenant responsibility, the results of a promise that God has made is what gets your prayers answered. Mm -hmm. You need to understand that. See, I think sometimes we think, well, you know, just because uh, I feel bad, God will just heal me. He doesn't have to do that. God doesn't heal you just because you, you got a bad toe. He don't have to do that. There's no obligation to him to do that. But if, there's, if you are connected to him by way of covenant yeah. through a promise, then you have a guarantee of him answering your prayer. You please, please know that. Because I think sometimes people just go to hollering and praying, and it ain't no whatever. Watch this. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. Now, what's, what's with that? Verse 14, saying, surely blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. Well, that worked. That part worked. He told Abraham that 400 years ago, and then Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot the 12 patriarchs. They went down to Egypt, and now it's 600,000 men, not counting women and children. Dear God, that's moving fast. In only 400 years. Wow. Do you see what you see? Our promise of God. You see, that's a promise. Yeah. You see why they have. You see why there were so many of them. It's a promise. God promised them that, and they had to. They had to. Cause the devil got involved with that back in the days and tried to stop that, but it didn't work. Amen. He started killing all the babies, just killing the males, and you know what I mean. And heard about the deliverer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that didn't work either. There's nothing that the devil has ever come up with to stop God that's worked. No. No. Right now, what you, what you are in the middle of a demonic attack against the people of God right now as we speak. You are in the middle of it. Amen. It's not going to work. Amen. There has never been anything that the devil has come up with charge against the people of God that worked. He tried to not, he tried to kill Moses before he grew up. Mm 
That didn't work. He tried to kill Jesus after he was born. That didn't work. You understand? See, learn things. And no, see, see, that's why there is no reason for the people of God to be fearful at any time. You know the devil is not going to win. You know that. Why would you let him suck you in at his attempt to shut God's plan down? Because that is exactly what you're in the middle of. An attempt of the devil to shut down the people of God. And as many of them that are being affected, it does not affect, it has to affect you. And there are many that are being affected. It's working. Or seem like it's working. And it's having a, very, a major adverse effect on many. But there is no reason for you to even flinch. Because God has you in the palm of his hands. And if you'll believe that, then all you got to do is look at you, look at the track record of God. Amen. Has anything ever worked that the devil tried? Well, what makes you think this is going to work? But you can get caught up in the tailspin of the thing and the fear can take you out. Oh, Yes. But God always has a solid rock. Now look at that. Watch this. Coming out of Egypt. See this? Watch this. Coming out of Egypt. The devil went in there and stirred him up, boy. Oh, he stirred him up, got him all going all different direction. And Moses had to draw a line in the sand. And if you go, if you oh, come on on this side, and that other bunch side to stay on the other side, guess what happened? The earth opened up. Down the hatch they went. So he kept his remnant. And he, see, God always got, there's always those that are going with God. There's always, there's always, there, there are always those. God, Joshua, as he would begin to fulfill his ministry, yeah. he came to a town, he had to draw a line in the sand. He said, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Down through the ages, down yeah. through the ages, down the, all the way down into the church age, you see the same thing over and over again. So, my dear friends, what you are experiencing right now in your generation is nothing new. It's a demonic attack against the people of God. But God has already said the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. Now, if you, can, if you go and play with the devil and begin to just ignore the things of God, and you will get scared caught up in the backdraft of the thing and suffer a bunch of adverse stuff that you don't have to. Now you can do that if you want to. I'm not going to do that. But you can do it if you want to. And God will let you. But you don't have to. With the Bible, with the word of God that we have today and the faith that we've been exposed to, there is no reason for any Christian to be walking slow no day. I'm telling you, for what God has taught us yeah. out of his word, mm -hmm. there is no, we should, this church should be grinning with people right this yeah. moment. But do you see how flaky, how flaky we are? We just so flaky, we just flick off. Mm. Devil go, boo! Mm. You understand? Yes. <laughs> what do you think going to happen? You think, think God going to say, oh, Oh, the poor people. I'm just going to just go ahead and my. He ain't never did that. Never. God never did that. Never. You either stand the test or you fail. And if you fail these tests, you're going to have to take them over. Oh. And the next one's going to be more severe than this one. Yes, no, 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 no. You don't, God, no, no, you, don't get, you don't just get passed just because you, you fail the test. God don't just pass you on. When you fail tests, you have to take them over. Yes, sir. Hmm. No, God, has, God is doing all of these things. He is doing all of these things because he's trying to encourage us. And I'm telling you, we're going to have to operate in the kingdom according to kingdom rules. He's not going to change the rules for your generation. No more than he did the last generation and neither or the next generation. 
We're going to follow the same rules. Jesus set the standard. It's called a standard of holiness. I am holy, be holy. Come out from among them and be ye separate. The standard is not going to change. But, but this is 2020. I don't care if it's 2040. The standard of the word of God is not going to change. You're going to require faith to walk this journey out. Amen. Do you think it wouldn't even be fair to the other saints if we didn't have to walk in the same faith? It wouldn't be fair to them. If they had to walk in a faith and we get the same thing without walking in the faith? No, no, it's already been said. It's impossible to please God without faith. Now, why, why do we think that we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get past and just get just everything that's going to be nice and no faith, just kind of go on with a little flesh? No, 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 no. You're going to walk in victory by faith and faith alone. The same faith that the apostles walked in. It's the same faith down through the generations, down through the ages. And 2020 is going to be walking in the same faith. If you live through this. If you walk in this life. If, you, if, the, if you're going to experience this life, this was promised, you're going to get it by the same faith. That's the standard of the church. And he's not going to, he's not going to alter his word. He's not going to alter his word. He already said that. God's word that goes forth out of his mouth is not going to return void, and he will not alter it. He will not alter his words. He will not alter his word. God is not going to alter his word just because you're feeling pitiful. He's not going to change his word. Remember Paul coming there, he was there, there, but that devil giving him a fit. Ooh, he said, oh, get him off me. Oh, get that devil off me. He's begging God. This is the apostle Paul. He's begging God. Can you get the devil off me? What did he tell him? And you think he's going to tell you anything different? You can holler all you want. Oh, God! Help me! Now, grace is sufficient, son. I'm telling you, you're going to get the same answer. <laughs> you're going to get the same answer. Because if he give you a different answer that he gave Paul, then he's not God. Do you understand how this works? Well, he called it Paul. He received the answer. He got it. Oh, yeah. It's okay. He said, I got it now. Yeah. And you can get it. You'll get it. You, you, you'll get it. No, his grace, my grace, they that receive, they are, he already told you, they that receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life. Well, if you don't believe that, then you won't reign. But if you believe that and you receive the abundance of grace, then you will know and you'll just walk, march right on through. You just, keep, you just walk right on through. You, you, you just march right on through. But this, this promise that God made, he made this promise unto us and the promise that he made, and we, it's guaranteed because God made the promise. I was Hebrew, that's so when God made promise to Abraham because he could, swear by, he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, surely blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply you. And so we see that. He, he, he did exactly what he said. Yeah. Yes, he did. And so after he had patiently endured, the, endured he obtained the promises. Well, dear God, he sure did. Yeah. Now, remember, remember Abraham? He didn't, put his, he didn't get a piece of the land. He got nothing. The promise was made through him and established through him. And the promise was promise down through the ages. And guess what? Did you know that promise is still good today? I'm living on it. The promise that God made to Abraham, I'm living on it right now. I'm trying to show us the value of promise and the value of the word of God and, and so that we can develop confidence in the word of God. Let's see. Quickly turn to Galatians chapter 3.
Galatians chapter 3, pick up at verse number 25. Let's pick up at 25. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. 26. For you are all sons of God. Now listen to me. I'm trying to show you that, that the same promise that God made to Abraham that caused 600,000 people to come out of Egypt, that was working to that promise. The same promise is working on you and I today. Now watch this. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, see that apostrophe and S there? That ownership. Do Christ own you? Then you are what? And what? Whoa. Oh, you ought to be shouting there. You know what an heir is. An heir is one that got something coming. And heirs according to the promise. The son, the promise, when God made promise to Abraham way before there was Isaac. That thing is just as powerful today as it was then. Because watch this. You say, well, how did it get to me? I'm not Jewish. Do you belong to Christ? Amen. He's Jewish. Literally, he is. He is the seed of Abraham. He is the seed of... Why, why do you think he's called the son of David? See, that's the bloodline. He's called the son of David. And that's why... So, so now, if, if, you, if I'm in Christ, if I'm Christ, that's why, he, that's why he said, now, if you are Christ, if I'm Christ, then I'm Abraham's seed too. And not only that, but I'm an heir. I fall in line. I fall, I'm an heir. I got it coming to me too. So the promise is for me, and that's why, that's how I got healed, driving down the highway. The promise that God made, he had to promise, he had to feel, he had to fulfill it. He had to fulfill, he has to fulfill your promise, to your request. You see, you got to get ready, and if you can't handle it, you, you won't get it. He has to fulfill your, your request. No, he has to. No, he cannot ignore, God cannot ignore your request. He can't because he has already promised. Now back to back to back now back to Titus. Back to Titus. Don't look at Titus. In hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised. Now, now you see, just that, that statement, that statement guarantees, yes, sir. guarantees that it if God is obligated. And he did it to himself. He swore by himself. That's why I showed it to you. He swore by himself. He obli God obligated himself to answer your prayers. Yes, sir. He obligated himself to give you eternal life. Yes. He obligated himself to heal you. Good. He obligated himself to protect you. Uh -huh. He has to. Yes. So why would you walk around full of fear? God has obligated himself to protect you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And given you his word that it, 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 it has to be. Yes. I will do it. Amen. No evil shall befall you. God said that. Amen. No plague will come near. If plague come near my dwelling, then he can't be God no more. Amen. You see, you see what I mean? Now, see, you gotta get radical too. You gotta get just as radical as God. This is radical faith we're talking about. See, if you're scared to say something like that, you can't have it. <laughs> you you got to say that. Yeah. No, he, he has to. He said, God said, no evil shall befall you. Yes. It can't. Amen. If, if evil befalls me, then he can't be God no more. Do you see what I mean? You understand? You understand this? This is what's called radical faith. It's the faith of God. That's why it's God's, it's God's faith. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus said, have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. Yes, sir. Not no little mushy, mushy, you know, bless me, bless me faith. The God kind of faith. Yeah. 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 That's the kind of faith that you ought to have. Yes. Radical faith. Yes. When you can stand up and say, you, I have to be blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Can't be, I can't be rejected. I can't be. I can't be rejected. If God rejects me, then he's no longer God. Amen. You say, oh boy, you sure bold. Amen. No, that's the kind of faith you need. Yes, and, there's nothing, and, and God likes that. Mm -hmm. God likes that. Yes, he, he, did, he won't frown on you for saying that. You think God will frown on you for saying that? No, no. All you do, you prove to him, you believe him. And that's what he said. That's what he, he told Moses that years ago. He said, how long will these people not believe me? All the signs I've done for them. What are they waiting for? He's waiting for us to believe him. He's still waiting for his church. God is waiting for his church to believe him. Yes. Yes. All the deliverance that's just waiting for the people of God and he won't take it. He's waiting for people to, to, to rise up radically and believe him. It's impossible for me to fail. Amen. Amen. Can't. It's impossible for me to go under. Amen. Do you think Jesus was upset when them guys tore their roof off their house? <laughs> Dear Lord. Whew. Who is happy about tearing somebody's roof off? Jesus. <laughs> What did he say? What did the Bible say he saw? He saw their faith. But who's going to fix my roof? Who cares about your roof? Do you see what I mean? Do you see what we're talking about here? We're talking about the radical faith of God that he's given. That's the God kind of faith. That's the, God is, he's, he give us that. That's the faith that took Jesus to Calvary. You talk about faith. You talk about faith. You talk about a man that lays his life down and die and wait for God to raise him up. What? And nobody never did that before. What? What kind of faith are you talking about? Faith that will let you kill me. And I believe God's going to raise me up. And he did it. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Oh, yeah. And every devil in hell said, how ain't it going to happen? Yeah. Well, that's the kind of faith that God has given to you and I. Yes. And that's why he put all this powerful language there for us to read. Oh, yes, sir. God promised that. And he can't lie. And he's waiting for you to get on it and believe it. And then stand up and make a bold statement, a radical statement, and say, dear God, I, I have to be healed. It's impossible for me not to be healed. Amen. It's impossible for me not to, for me not to be delivered. Amen. And if I go under, then God has to go under. Yes, sir. He can't be God no more because he's the one that promised it and he can't lie. Amen. But he promised it, he can't lie, but it didn't work. Can you imagine that? There's no such thing as that. There is no such thing as that. Amen. He promised it. He can't lie, but it didn't work. Can you see that? That's so floozy. But do you know how many floozy of us walking around don't believe God will supply, meet your need, don't believe God's going to take care of you? Just don't believe it. Just don't believe it. Just don't believe it. Well, you don't believe it, you're going to suffer the consequences. But this is the love that God's given unto us, and this is the life that I'm talking about. It's the life of God. It's yours. You either take it or you let it go. I think I'll take mine. Go ahead, stand to your feet.